Caggiano on a gray, somewhat blustery, slightly moist day in Venice, California. And we're dealing with the last part of Sgt. Pepper. The very finale of Sgt. Pepper's The uh, Day in a Life. All right, so, of course, I'm completely unprepared today, so. Yeah, but you being unprepared is like other people studying for hours and hours and hours. All right. Um, this song is in G. Let's uh, let's give some uh, give a bit of a listen. Again, you know, Sgt. Pepper is just uh, so full of color and texture, and that was, uh, I said in the last, one of the last uh, bits of, in the last lectures. Uh-huh. You having, uh, are you okay? I think I'll so. Focus in and yeah, there we are. Okay, I'm sorry. There we go. Yeah, okay. So, you know, Sgt. Pepper is just such a, uh, you know, the, the, it was really a, a, a landmark in terms of getting new textures, new, new tonal colors. We talked all about this. Right. And now here in... Um, a day in a life. I mean, they're they're like the the actual uh, performance by the separate Beatles is is really incredibly well done. For example, Ringo's creativity with the with the tom tom sound sounds like kettle drums. He might have even used kettle drums. I don't even know. I should have checked on the uh, studio notes. But uh, you know he you know I heard that Ringo had had worked it out over and over again until finally he he came up with a sound that he really liked. So he was very creative with this. Huh. And then we have McCartney, of course, plugged direct into the board. Uh, you know, normally, for people who don't know recording studios, normally you have your, your guitar and amplifier set up, you plug into the amplifier, the speaker projects the sound, and then they put a microphone in front of that and record that. But um, the microphone itself goes into something called the board, and the board is what connects to the, to the recording device, be it a tape recorder or a computer. Right. The board sets the levels and all like this, the tone quality, the, the equalization, which means how trebly or how bass, you know. So he was, uh, McCartney was what was called direct injection into the board, which gave the bass a, a full presence because it's immediate. It's not, there's no middleman here. It's okay. Like boom, right in. Now, dumb question. That can still be manipulated from by the board? Uh, it, the notes can't be, the, the actual right. notes, what was recorded, oh, well nowadays they can with computers, but you know, back in the days of magnetic tape, no. You, uh, but what could be manipulated was actual, the, the actual tone color, the roundness okay. of the tone, right. or the sharpness of the right. tone, you know, that sort of thing. You know. uh, and uh, you know, I've heard actually, I don't know how true this is, uh, um, the guy that produced my CD had been, he's not a real like recording engineer, so he did a lot of study. He's very fascinated by, by this whole science. And uh, he read this one thing where like equalization can put you in the bass range, the mid range, the treble range, right? And you could choose like little, like tiny slot of that and just like force the instrument to just that range just by messing with the equalization on the, on the board. And uh, this one guy said, you can, what the best approach is to, to like each instrument you use put it in its own little band its own little separate ribbon of, of EQ that's separate from the rest of them. And he goes, if you, sample, if you listen to it uh, soloed, meaning you just listen to that one particular instrument, it'll sound awful. Hmm. Because you just like reduce it to this one band. He said, but when you, when you listen to the entire spectrum, the whole thing takes on a, a full dimension. Oh, okay. I, I don't know how true that is, but it's an interesting so idea. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, that was George Martin's job, by the way. Mm -hmm. If you ever see those YouTube videos, he's like, you know, when he's reflecting on the old Beatles, it's so cool to watch these because he's got the old magnetic tape running and he's, he's messing with the faders and he'll bring up one and say, oh, this, this viola over here, you know, played this and then bring it back. And, oh, if you listen to the vocal here, you'll see it's been, you know, blah, 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 you know, whatever. Really wonderful to watch this happen. So Martin was like a hands-on producer. Nowadays, producers are, are not. Uh, they tend to be just about money and, and you know, just like movie producers. They're oh, not yeah. so much in the mix uh, as they used to be. Uh, nowadays, it's the engineers or the know-it-alls in the wow. studio. Okay. The producer kind of will say, well, you know, can you turn this into more of a country song? Because we're trying to, you know, I think we got a better shot in Nashville. Wow. You know, like, can you tweak the song enough for it so it sounds country, whatever. Yeah. You know. Anyway, so we have a day in a life. Chord progression, well, is... 
The initial chord progression is very... Uh, so we got G. Oh, no, wait. Uh, I think it doesn't go to the F there. Let, let me give it a listen. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's it. Beautiful. God, this is such a piece of music. Uh, all, all told, I mean, you can't just take the song alone. It's just the, the performance, everything about it. It's so perfect. It yeah. captures... So it's G, with the news, B minor, oh boy. B minor. Thou lucky man who made the grave. All right, now let's look at some of this. First of all, we have a scale line. This is very, very classic, all right? Um, over and over again, you see this in guitar music. Uh, we have a... I had to tune down for that low D note. Okay. But it's... Now, inside the context, we have G, B minor with an F-sharp bass, so there's the second note. Then E minor. And since we can't tune the guitar down like that in the middle of performance, we grab the D from a higher octave, so we get... Right, so that's an E minor 7. I opened it up. You opened okay, it. Okay. Get that D. C. Now he's following, uh, let me see, uh, uh, D. Yeah, it's actually the line is going further downward because it's going uh, C, okay. B, A. So that's a long line. Okay. All right. So again, uh, G. B minor over F sharp bass, E minor, E minor 7, C, E minor, and I love this. Now what that is, it's a suspension, it's a, it's a A minor sus 2. Okay. Alright, the n natural chord that would belong there is A minor. Right. But sus 2 means you're suspending the, the quality of the chord that lets you know whether it's happy or sad is removed and replaced with a two. Okay. Very much used in Baroque and classical, this, this technique. Oh, okay. Right? In other words, uh, you know, if I want to do a resolution, and then I know it's sad. Mm -hmm. What's that last note? Or... Right. So the, the suspension literally keeps us in suspense. We don't know if it's happy or sad. However, in the key of G that we're working in, A minor is the natural chord to the key of G. So the assumption here is that it's it's an implied A minor, okay. but we're not gonna. And it has just a beautiful effect. Uh, now, if I'm if I'm correct, to the piano kind of diddles a little bit on that chord and they do throw the third in and you get a sound more like this. You have the second and the third, the suspended two plus the third. Okay. to the next yeah. section now. I'm sorry, I didn't really study very well the night before on this one. Yeah, it goes to the F there. Alright, let's 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 come around. I want you to hear that again, that sus2 chord. Now listen for the piano. Right here. Huh? Beautiful sound. Very jazzy, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like... So kind of like a lick like that, which is... So you, you get the third of the chord in there. Alright? 
It's that sounds like a Simon and Garfunkel <laughs> bit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's that kind of thing. Okay. Sure. Beautiful. So we should do some Simon and Garfunkel one day. I'd love to analyze the uh, Bookends record, but I, I think it's their best record yeah, ever. Yeah, that is a goodie. Yeah. It's real. It's their peppers, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so the second, now, so he goes two verses, but he creates first and second endings on these verses. Okay, so the first ending is with that sus Alright, but the second time... We get a turn around the four chord, the five chord. All right, so let me play that all in context. Now we have okay. A prime. And now second one, second A section. A prime again. So we have two types of A section. Okay. Well, again, when I say the word A, I don't mean the chord A. I mean a right. full section of music. Now, what, what, what we get there is mostly this is really straight, uh, uh, straight major scale stuff. Okay. But as is the pension of the Beatles, mixing modes is a very common thing. And again, we get the presence of the mixolydian by the introduction of this F chord. And if you're sensitive, you can hear how the F chord strays a little bit from the from the setup that was previously okay. brought forth. So uh, let's listen for that app. And here's the remedy. That's the remedy bringing us back to the major. Why? Because the major, the key of G major, has an F sharp in it. And every every one of the chords we've done so far conforms to the notes of that scale, except when the F comes up, because this is an F sharp and an F chord and it has an F. Okay. All right. So there's our mixolydian note. There's our root mixolydian. You can always tell mixolydian you play a major scale and flat the note uh, that comes that T from T to do. You there's T do and flat it. All right. I've said this over and over and over again. That's mixolydian, and that's a truck. <laughs> It's a truck that's playing an aeolian. 